Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today I'm going to be talking about the GNOME desktop environment. So um, I've installed Fedora 38 and this comes with the GNOME desktop environment. Um, and we're going to start off, we're going to go into Firefox. And we're going to look at um, the GNOME website. So here we are, um, you can get to GNOME from www.gnome.org. And this is the actual website. Obviously, you get GNOME installed with quite a lot of distributions, Fedora being one of them. And the latest version is uh, GNOME 44. It's actually said GNOME, not GNOME. Now, um, I am going to make the mistake of saying GNOME at least once during this tutorial. So um, I apologize for that, but it is GNOME. Uh, so get things done with ease, comfort, and control, and an easy and elegant way to use your computer. GNOME 44 is designed to help you have the best possible computing experience. Simple and easy to use, intuitive and efficient, and finely crafted, and there's much, much more. And these are the supporters of GNOME. And uh, what I also wanted to look at was the apps. So these are the core apps that you get with GNOME. You get a calculator, a calendar, um, character cheese, clocks, and uh, connections um, for using other desktops, uh, terminate an emulator, contact um, app, uh, disk usage, disks for managing your disks, uh, document scanner for your um, flatbed scanners, document viewers, GNOME extensions, um, there you go, there's a GNOME once, a uh, penny in the jar, uh, GNOME extensions, we'll get to that later on in this um, guide, uh, files, um, there's so many here, there's maps, photos, and videos etc and there's a music app so we're going to do some of these we're not going to do all of them um, because this video would last forever and then you've got um, other apps that um, integrate with gnome very well like i'll scroll through some of them and here you are and then you've got some development tools as well so we're going to start off um, looking at the desktop environment itself so here I am on the GNOME desktop. Uh, in the top left hand corner, I've got um, an activities button. And if I press that, you can see I've got a number of workspaces. I've got this one here. You can see all the list of workspaces by the current three here. I'm on the right hand side of one. Uh, I've got one in the middle and then one on the left. And so that one's got my video recorder recording this video. Uh, this one's got a web page and I've been looking up the GNOME keyboard shortcuts and then this one's a blank one um, to give us a blank workspace for this section of the video. Uh, so that brings up your workspaces. Uh, also means you can search for programs. So if we say movies, you get the GNOME videos comes up there. Uh, you could also search for office and then it brings up the office suites. Um, so you can type by the name of the program. So I could say Firefox, or you can type by the type of program that you're looking for. Uh, down here, you've got a dock. Uh, at the moment, it's at the bottom. Um, I'm going to show you how to install extensions um, so you can move that around. And then we've got other apps, uh, but these are the ones that uh, Fedora have decided to put on the panel. But these can be added to and changed. And then if you click this button here, it brings up the um, applications. So what I could do is I could unpin Chrome and then I could pin Firefox here and now every time I press the Windows button it's Firefox that's there not um, Chrome. In incidentally anything with a dot underneath means it's running. If I open a new workspace I can there's various keyboard shortcuts you can use. So uh, the Windows key brings up the dash so Windows A brings up your applications. If I want to go to the Control Alt and the left arrow key, if I want to go to the right one, I go to the right one. If I go to the left one again, it's Control Alt and left key. Um, so if I want to move uh, this um, application to a new workspace. Um, say I want to move it to the one to the right, I can press uh, the Windows key or Super key, uh, Shift key, and the page down. 
And if I want to move it to the left, I can press super and page up. And when I press that now, you can see there's two on the same thing. And I can press super and page up again. And it's over that window. And if I do it again, it now moves it to the left. And you can see it's now to the left of the one there. I can do super key and end, and it'll move it to the very last workspace. And I can do super key and home, and it moves it back to the first. So you can see you can move applications around. Uh, there's a whole host of um, key presses you can use, but these are just some of them. Close that down. Um, we've got a clock up here. Up in the right hand corner, you've got the sort of like notifications thing. So uh, you can choose your what to do with your internet. So I'm, I'm wired at the moment, but I could connect to a Wi Fi. Um, clicking on that shows me my Wi Fi connections. And I can click on that button to see all networks. And if I wanted to connect to one of these Wi Fi's, I just press that and then I type in my password. I can also um, look at my power mode, night light, dark style. Um, I can take a screenshot with that button there. And you, uh, the interesting thing about this is you can do a selection screen or a window. And you can also record as a screencast video. Uh, now it's kind of limited in the sense that it doesn't allow you to record audio, um, but it uh, does allow you to um, do a screen capture video. So I'll cancel out of that. And then you've got your lock screen here uh, and log out and you can change your audio settings and your microphone settings and you can go dark style, light style, and you can put night light on, etc. Uh, there's the settings here. So uh, this is your home settings. So again, you can set up your Wi-Fi. You can set up networks, VPNs, uh, connect to proxy servers, etc. Um, Bluetooth, I've got Bluetooth speaker. So if I wanted to connect to Bluetooth, all I have to do is turn on my speaker. And then I can cl click that. And there you see it's connected. So now I can play audio through that speaker. Uh, so appearance, dark mode, light mode. Um, there's these backgrounds. Um, these are the ones that come with um, Fedora. Uh, but you can add your own pictures in if you want. Uh, so select a picture, click open, and then I can choose my background to that. Uh, notifications, you can choose what you get notifications for. So in this case, everything's on, but you can turn it off and you can put do not disturb mode on, etc. Now uh, you can change your search feature. So that's this thing here, and it determines what is actually found. So you can include app provided search results, um, and you can choose which folders are searched. Multitasking, got this concept of a hot corner. So top left hand corner, if I hold it up there, it brings up the workspaces. And then you've got active screen edges. Um, so you drag against the top left and right edges to resize them. So like that, like that, like that. So then we've got apps and this lets you change various things about each of the apps, mainly notifications, you'll see. But for some apps, it might have extra features in here. Uh, deal with privacy. So you can make it so your screen blanks after you walk away for a few minutes. And after it blanks, it will lock the screen automatically. Um, you can have uh, automatic screen delay. I, I have that turned off um, because when I'm like rendering videos and stuff i like to see what's happening i don't want the screen going off uh, there's location services um where the applications can see where you are in the world camera access allow permitted apps to use camera obviously for things like cheese you'd need that microphones i'm recording videos so uh, as you can see there's so much you can do uh, this file history one um this lets you see how long files are maintained in applications um, before um, they're not shown anymore. We've got online accounts, so you can connect to all these sort of services here. So if you do a remote desktop, I've got um, my device name's Fedora. I wasn't particularly creative when I set up this machine. 
I haven't got any of these turned on because I turned sharing on. Um, I could set up a remote desktop. So if I turn that on, other people should now be able to connect to this desktop. And these are the username and details that people would need um, to connect to this computer. And it even gives you the address. So uh, same file sharing, somebody could just type that into um, their address bar and this is the password they need if I turn that on. Uh, media sharing. This allows me to share my music videos and pictures. And if I have this connected, it, it turns on SSH so people can log in using SSH. And you've got your printers. Um, this, obviously, if you've got a printer set up, it quite often finds the printer you have already um, and you can change some of the details if you need to. Uh, removable media such as USB drives, what to do. Um, so for CD, what are you going to do with it? Um, what uh, you can open the in rhythm box and other app, saving DVDs. Um, <laughs> if we're going back to the 90s and the noughties. Um, so default apps, um, a default web program is Chrome, but I'm going to change that to Firefox. Uh, haven't got a mail program installed, calendar with the box videos and image viewer. Right, so I'm not going to go through all the applications because that's kind of silly. I mean, you've got a calculator. I'm pretty sure everyone knows how a calculator works. Brilliant. Got a calendar, similarly, everyone knows how a calendar works. Brilliant. You can put appointments in, etc. Uh, cheese uh, webcam program. Clocks helps you keep track of time. Interestingly, about clocks. So you can add a clock in here. Search for a city, so Aberdeen. Then I can add that in. And there I've got a clock there, brilliant. And it shows me the time. That, that's brilliant. There's already a clock up there. Uh, connections, view and use other desktops. I'm not going to deal with that. Um, terminal, uh, you can get to a terminal, control on T. Or if that doesn't work, you can go to the um, applications and take uh, select from the applications. And it's a basic terminal emulator. A contact manager, disk usage analyzer. This lets you view um, how much your disk is being taken, etc. So uh, this is my Fedora. Gives a nice graph. As you see, um, <laughs> gives you this graphical view of your of your drive and where everything is. Uh, disks enables you to manage your disks, and this is my drive. And you can see it's got this amount of space on it, etc. It's this is useful for managing USB drives and other disks. You've got the file manager. You can navigate around your drive with this and pick other locations like Windows Network. If if you've got a, uh, anything on the Windows Network, you can click on that and it will show up and you can connect to it, assuming you have permissions. We have an image viewer. You can navigate through the photos in a folder. You can turn these properties off if you want. And you can do a slideshow. Got these little arrows here. So we've also got photos. Oh, I'm going to come back to uh, music. Uh, it picks up all your pictures in your folder. I should say I've got some where I've been creating the title screens to my videos. Yeah, you have known software manager. This is where you install applications. Now, obviously, the sources depend on your distribution, uh, but you can go to the repositories and you can choose where you're installing things from and then to use the actual package manager to find new ones. You've got the explore, so you can go through any of the categories. And then, so for instance, I can go into play and you can see um, these are the applications under the play category and you can search using the search button so if I want to search for um, Chrome 
the, the, the options and you can see if it's already installed, it has it installed next to it. And you can also see what's installed by clicking on this install tab and scrolling through. And you can see what updates are available by clicking on the updates. Uh, system monitor, it's useful to see what your resources are like. As you can see, um, my CPU usage is quite high at this moment in time. Um, and that's OBS is taking up most of my CPU and it's causing some swapping. Um, we've got a text editor, we've got videos. So I've got a whole host of videos in here, um, mainly of me recording stuff. And if, so you can add other channels in. Um, uh, well, the channels seems to be a complete nonsense. I'm not sure what that's for. Um, but it doesn't seem to do very much. Uh, under the videos though, um, you can add local videos from different folders than the videos folder. You can add it from any of your other folders. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but you can also add web videos. So here is the GNOME web browser. You can install this from the software manager and it's just a standard web browser. As you can see, I've gone to my YouTube page. Um, you can add more tabs in and you can see it tabs across like that. Um, we've got incognito mode, there's bookmarks here. If you want to add book bookmarks, if I want to bookmark my YouTube page, I just control D as normal and it adds it to the bookmarks. So I can say YouTube. And now if I went here, I, I could click here and it gives me my review it would always go to that page. So it's um, obviously not as fully featured as something like Firefox or Chrome or something like that, but it's a decent built-in web browser for the GNOME desktop environment. Similarly to the web browser, uh, GNOME Music can be installed from the software manager. And uh, here it is. As you can see, it's found my music in my music folder. You can create playlists. You can see the artists here and the albums. So uh, this could view, see the artists, and you can scroll down through it. See all the list of all the songs. You could create your own playlist. So you've got favorite songs, both played, never played, recently added, recently played. You can connect to a last FM account and you can add to a playlist and you can enter a name for your playlist. So I can call it metal. So now when I go into playlists, I've got another, my own playlist here. So it's great, quite a good music app. You don't need to have the rhythm box installed if, if this um, covers your needs. So really, um, you could just install most of the GNOME tools and you don't need much else. You could just have uh, uh, most of the GNOME tools and um, all you need then really is an office suite, maybe a mail client. You don't need much else. Um, you've got most of the tools under GNOME. So I want to start um, talking about GNOME extensions. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to your software manager. What we're going to do is we're going to search for GNOME extensions. And you can see you've got this one here. And click install. And if I open that up, you, you'll see a basic set of extensions. So I make this big. Um, so for instance, I can put an applications menu in the top corner. I can put a places menu in the top corner. I can put a window list at the bottom like this. So you can tweak various things um, about your um, GNOME experience. But these are the basic set. Um, if you go to Firefox or browser of choice and type in extensions.gnome.org, you'll see a whole list of other extensions available. For instance, um, you've got this add to desktop and you can install these um, by just clicking on the install button and you can see I've got this add to desktop. Now, what does that do? Right, we're going to go to another workspace. We'll go to the end here. I'm going to bring up OBS, for instance. Right click, now we've got this add to desktop. So I do that and then I escape out. Now, unfortunately, that's a great example of not every extension works. So we're going to go back to here. We'll go back to the extension, see what else there is. 
So there's this one here called panel settings. It says various settings for the panel. Um, so as you can see, my panel is defaulted at the bottom and at the top. Let's see what this gives us. It says this extension is incompatible with the current known version. We'll try it anyway, so can't use that. So what I found when looking through is that a lot of the um, extensions are either out of date for the current version of GNOME or just don't work. So um, what you can do is you can sort the uh, extensions by popularity, recent downloads. So you'd assume the most recent ones are the ones that are most likely to work with the latest version of GNOME. So that's what I've done, I sorted by recent. Uh, so one thing that um, I don't like about GNOME, GNOME 44 is the fact that you have to, to, to get to the bottom dock, you have to press the window key first, and then you have to click the icon. So um, I've installed this um, extension called dash to dock. Um, what this means is that the dock is always visible, assuming you haven't got a window in the way. So if I drag that away, you can see my, my dock is now always visible. Um, so that that's quite a handy tool because it means I've now always got the, the dock. I don't have to press the Windows key to bring the dock up. And it's easy to turn these things off if you don't want it anymore. You just do that and then it disappears. Now, what I found with most uh, with a lot of these extensions is they stop work, stop working after a while. People get bored of them, but you'd hope with the most popular ones that they'd keep going. Ultimately, uh, GNOME has great applications, um, but uh, relying on extensions to customize your desktop um, look and feel is um, not great. They uh, quickly become out of sync with the the version of GNOME you're using. So at the moment I'm using GNOME 44 and a lot of the extensions I was looking at are just aren't compatible with GNOME 44. Uh, and so you're continuously hoping that the maintainers of the extensions keep up with the desktop environment, uh, as opposed to XFCE and KDE, where you can move panels around, change themes, etc., um, quite easily. So GNOME is very much for using as is out of the box with just the minor tweaks here and there. Um, to sum up the GNOME desktop environment, um, really great set of applications. So the, the power of GNOME is the applications. Um, you're supposed to use the desktop environment as it is. It's not wholly customizable. And the, it's all about workflow. It's all about keyboard shortcuts, moving things around workspaces, and just using the apps as they are. And if you're happy with that, if you're happy using GNOME as it is and not moving panels around, docks around, etc., then I think you'll get on fine with it. Um, and there are some great tools. And that's the end of the review. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to subscribe for more content from Everyday Linux user. And thank you for watching.